I've got a nice problem that was suggested by the viewer Good Place to Stop, who I'm sure you guys are familiar with in the comments. And this comes from a publication called Mathematical Reflections, and it's from the year 2019. So I've edited a little bit. There is actually another case that is presented in the problem, but I'll leave that for homework at the end. So what we'll do is find all non-negative real numbers and natural numbers, x and n respectively, such that x to the n minus the floor of x is equal to n. So you guys know I like the floor function, so I had to do this problem. Okay, so let's maybe take care of a couple of simple cases quickly. And then after that, we'll look at the larger case. So our first short case will be if x is in the interval 0 to 1. And it's a half open interval, so we'll, we will include 0 but not 1. So if we're in this setup, then that tells us that the floor of x is equal to 0. Just by the definition of the floor function, it's like an elevator down to the closest integer. Also, we know that this means that x to the n is on the interval 0 to 1, again, not including 1. And that turns our equation into x to the n equals n. Now, is there a solution to this where we have a real number x and a natural number n? Well, that kind of depends on if you include 0 as a natural number. So maybe there's a solution with x equals 0 and n equals 0, all depending on if you're considering 0 a natural number. So I'll leave it to you guys to decide if you want to consider that a solution or not. Okay, so the next short case will be if x is equal to 1. So as you can see, we're splitting this into three cases. If x is less than 1, if it's equal to 1, and then the bigger case will be what happens if x is greater than 1. Okay, so if x equals 1, then we have 1 to the n minus the floor of 1 is equal to n. But that collapses to 1 minus 1 equals n or 0 equals n. So again, maybe we've got another solution here where x is equal to 1 and n is equal to 0. Again, depending on if you're considering 0 as a natural number. Okay, so now let's look at our bigger case, which is when x is on the interval 1 to infinity. And so I mean that it's got to be strictly bigger than 1. Okay, so now let's notice that we can write x as the floor of x plus the fractional part of x. And so here this fractional part of x is on the half open interval from 0 to 1. And then the floor of x, well, that's obviously an integer. And then under this setup, we see that x is bigger than or equal to the floor of x. So that's obviously true. Okay, so now let's jump into our equation. We've got n is equal to x to the n minus the floor of x. So here we're assuming that we have a solution. And now we're going to simplify this so we only have a floor of x on the right-hand side, and we can do that with this inequality. So this is bigger than or equal to the floor of x to the n minus the floor of x. But now we can start factoring that. So notice that, that is going to be equal to the floor of x times the floor of x to the n minus 1 minus 1. But again, this guy right here has a standard factorization, which is useful to know for these kind of problems. And that would be the floor of x times the floor of x minus 1 times the floor of x to the n minus 2 plus the floor of x to the n minus 3, all the way down to the floor of x plus 1. So like I said, we split this guy into these two terms. Okay. So now I want to notice that since our x is between 1 and infinity, but not including 1, that tells us that the floor of x is bigger than or equal to 1. Okay, but if the floor of x is bigger than or equal to 1, that tells us that each of these are bigger than or equal to 1, because those are the floor of x to some power. But if you have a number that's bigger than or equal to 1, you raise it to an exponent that's still bigger than or equal to 1. 
Okay, great. So that means we can put an inequality here and we're left with the floor of x times the floor of x minus one times, well, if we just replace all of those with one, we get n minus one. Remember, we're using this inequality here. So I'm replacing this one with one, this one with one, all the way down the line. So we have one plus one plus one plus one, but how many of those do we have? We have n minus one. One for each of all the x's, and then this one left over. Okay, so now let's hone in on this inequality that we've just constructed, starting here and then ending here, and that's actually gonna be extremely helpful for finishing off this problem. Okay, so let's bring that up and then we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we were looking at our final big case, which was when x was on this interval from one to infinity, not including one, and we determined that n was bigger than or equal to the floor of x times the floor of x minus one times n minus one. But notice that that tells us that the floor of x times the floor of x minus one is less than or equal to n over n minus one. And so now this kind of division is allowed if n is not equal to one. So notice if n is equal to one, then we're not allowed to divide by n minus one kind of obviously. But let's maybe talk through that. If n were equal to one, then this whole thing over here on the right hand side would cancel and we would have one is bigger than or equal to zero, which is a contradiction. So it's impossible for n to be equal to one anyway. Okay, great. But now notice that this number right here is less than one if n is bigger than or equal to three. So let's notice that. So if n is bigger than or equal to three, then we have the floor of x times the floor of x minus one is less than or equal to n over n minus one, which is strictly less than two. But on the other hand, this product is always a whole number. So that means we've got floor of x times floor of x minus one is equal to zero or one. So let's notice that it's indeed impossible for it to be equal to one because these two cannot simultaneously be one, but that means one would have to be larger than one and one would have to be less than one, which is again impossible because those are whole numbers. So that means this thing is equal to zero. But we know that the floor of x is bigger than or equal to one, which means the floor of x cannot be equal to zero. That means that the floor of x minus one is equal to zero, which tells us that the floor of x equals one. And so that's occurring if n is bigger than or equal to three. And now let's take care of the other case. Let's see what happens if n is equal to two. So if n is equal to two, then this inequality collapses to the floor of x times the floor of x minus one is less than or equal to two. But in this case, we do not have a strict inequality, so that opens up another possibility for the value of the floor of x. So we get in this case, the floor of x can be equal to one or two. Okay. So now let's like kind of summarize what we have so far and then we'll finish it off. So if n is bigger than or equal to two, we can have the floor of x equal one. So that's one possibility. So notice we proved it up here for n bigger than or equal to three. And then we saw that it happened here if n was equal to two as well. And then if, n is equal to two, we can also have the floor of x equal to two. So that's an additional solution. Okay, so now let's solve these in each of these cases. So notice if we've got n bigger than or equal to two and floor of x equal one, that collapses this equation to x to the n equals n plus one. Okay, and that's just from adding this one to the other side of the equation, which tells us that x is the nth root of n plus one. And so that gives us a whole family of solutions. We've got any n bigger than or equal to two, and then x is equal to this nth root of n plus one. 
And then over here, we can do something similar, but it's actually quite short. Here we've got x squared minus two is equal to two, which means x squared is equal to four, which tells us that x is equal to two. So here we've got a solution, which is x is equal to two and n is equal to two. Okay, so those are our two solutions. We've got a single solution over there and a family of solutions right here. And that's in the case when x is a non-negative real number. So maybe for homework, see what happens when x is a negative real number and post in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.